Hello! Welcome to the podcast to learn how to code a running record. This is an interactive podcast. You may need to pause and restart the podcast along the way to adjust to your own pace. You will need the printed handout of the little red hen and a pencil to complete this interactive podcast. Ready? Let's begin. Why use standard procedures for coding a running record? Having standard coding procedures enables us to be assured that when we claim a student is reading a text with a certain percent level of accuracy, we can say so with confidence and reliability. To make comparisons of student records over time, teachers need to have a common standard for taking records, for describing what they observe, for calculating the scores and interpreting the record. Now, some of you may have learned how to code a running record in the past. If your codes are slightly different than the ones proposed in this podcast, that is okay. As long as you know you are recording a substitution, insertion, self-correction, etc., and you do it consistently each time you take a running record. That is the important piece. When a child reads accurately, mark every word read accurately with a tick or a check. Follow the pattern of how the text is laid out on the page, line by line. For example, if one line of text says, Bill is asleep, tick three checks, and then begin ticking the next line of text on the new line. As you go back to analyze the record of the student's reading, it will make it easier for you to know the part of the text to refer back to. It would look like this on the screen. You have a text of the little red hen in front of you. For the purposes of learning the various coding conventions, the text has been broken into sections. You'll notice that the text is aligned to the left side of the paper. As we practice coding, you will record your ticks on the right side of the paper. Learning to do the running record on a blank piece of paper allows you the flexibility as a teacher to be able to do a running record with a student with any book at any time. There's no need to have the text of a book pre-printed to take a running record with a student. In fact, printed text often will not allow all of the child's behaviors to be recorded. Let's practice on section one. I will read the text as if I am the child reading. You record to the right of the text on your little red hen sheet. After each section, we will look at how the running record should look. Ready? Here we go. Begin ticking as I read. One spring morning, the little red hen found a grain of wheat. I will plant this grain of wheat, she said. If you need to pause to catch up before moving forward, please do so. Your running record should look like this. I read the text accurately, therefore you should have only ticks that replicate the form of the text line by line. The most common error students make is a substitution. A substitution is when a student reads an inaccurate word in place of the word in the text. For a substitution, you record what the child says above the line and record what the text actually says below the line. For example, if the child says home instead of house, it would be, re be recorded like you see on the screen. Each substitution is counted as one error. For scoring purposes, it is important to note that occasionally a child will make an error and then substitute this word repeatedly throughout the text. It counts as an error every time. The only exception to this is when the error is a proper noun such as Jill for Jane. This error is only counted the first time it is made. A tip for coding, often students read quickly enough that it is easy to fall behind as you code on the running record. Remember, as long as you capture what the child has said, 
you can go back and fill in whatever the text says later. Let's practice coding substitutions on section 2 in Little Red Hen. Ready? Here we go. She asked the duck, can you help me plant this grain of wheat? Not I, quacked the duck. I've got other things to do. If at any time during the podcast you need to pause after I've given um, the reading, please do so because our next section will be going to look at what the running record should look like. Here's what your running record should look like. Can was said in place of will and other was said in place of better. Each of these are counted as one error. Two other common errors are omissions and insertions. When a child omits a word as they are reading, record a dash above the line and the word they omitted below the line. Occasionally, a child will insert a word that doesn't exist in the text. The word inserted goes above the line and the dash is recorded below the rhyme. Just remember that anything the child says is above the line and what the text says is below. Each of these types of behaviors counts as one error. Ready to practice on section three? Here we go. She asked the dog, will you help plant this grain of wheat? Not I, barked the dog. I've got things to do. The reader omitted the word me and then omitted the word better. Each counts as an error. If a line or a sentence is omitted, redirect the students to the omitted line. This is recorded as one error for the redirect and then score the redirected reading as usual. If a child misses a page or turns two together, redirect the child to the missing pages. It is one error for the redirect and the reading is then scored as usual. Now let's practice insertions on section four. Ready? Here we go. She asked the cat, will you help me to plant this grain of wheat? Not I, meowed the cat. I've got more better things to do. The reader inserted two and more. Each is recorded as an error.